Welcome to my studio. My name's John McGowan and I'm a printmaker. And I want to tell you a little bit about the way that I work in screen printing. I make editions of prints, I proof them first, and then I create an edition, which is a set of prints which all look very similar, but they aren't a copy of anything that has existed before. Original prints by, hopefully, an original printmaker. to explain about the print that I'm making at the moment which is called Rotherstorp Lock. Um, it's a screen print about a lock gate on the Northampton arm of the Grand Union Canal. I first made a print of this scene about 40 years ago and recently a friend of mine unearthed a not very good copy of the print and it set me about thinking what I could do today with the sort of techniques that I have at my disposal and I want to explain how I make a screen print and how I've been working on Rotherstorp Lock. In 2003 I discovered a new book about screen printing written by Robert Adam and Carol Robertson called Screen Printing The Complete Water-Based System. Uh, the system is based around a whole series of touches which are soluble materials which you can paint onto a plastic sheet and I'm going to explain a little bit about how they work now. I'm going to demonstrate the water soluble touche first of all. It's probably the most versatile and you don't need much of it. Best to dilute it a little bit before you put it onto your plastic sheet. But if you brush it out, you will actually capture those brush marks on the screen. You can, if you want to, work into that with water. Wherever the light starts to come through more, that will create a lighter patch and because it's quite versatile I've sometimes blocked into that as well to create different textures. Ideal for sort of background areas if you want to produce a landscape print. The second touche I'm going to show you is the waterproof touche and it works in a similar way to the previous one but it is absolutely great for working with the lift solution. So the lift solution is a, a stop out. So I can draw up a design on here and then paint or splatter this material over the top. So this is the waterproof touche. Again, it's slightly smoother so you can block big areas in. Or another of my favourite ways of working is to use Mr Lautrec's old deal and that is a toothbrush splatter and that can be used with a paper resist or the lip solution to create some lovely graduated tones.
And the third and last one I'm going to show you is Touche Wash, which can also be used for making a spray. And I sometimes use it in one of those little atomizer sprays. And uh, I've used that one in the latest print that I'm going to show you in just a moment. I decant a little bit of it. And as it says, it's a wash. So it can be used to put a lovely flat area down onto your plastic. You can shape it very, very easily when it dries. Just take uh, the back end of an old paintbrush, of which there are many in this studio, sharpen it up, produce a texture inside that. So there are three different touches, different colours to identify them, different qualities, very good for um, uh, resist work, excellent for big wash area, smashing for use with texture. I started with a posterised version of my 1978 picture taken on a 120 camera. And then I had to decide how many colours I wanted to use and how I was going to build the picture up. For each colour I have to make a separate drawing or a painting on a sheet of acetate. And if I hold that up you'll see that it's transparent and that the light shines through the background. Each mark that I make on this sheet will make a printed mark in just one colour. This is the first version of that image that I've just shown you. Three greys later and the scene begins to emerge in a series of overlapped greys. All four greys have been printed over the top of each other. I've refined it so that I'm getting really soft edges in the sky and in the clouds over here. Once I've got those greys in place, I then take a set of coloured pencils and begin to work in the colours in the places where I want them. And because I'm working with transparent inks, the picture is going to be almost like a watercolour, where one colour can be seen through the one that's placed uh, underneath it. Here's the print with about four colours in place and three greys. It's given me an opportunity to see how I want to develop that further. So this would be called a stage proof. Here's a print with one of the next colours in place and what I do is I offer up a sheet of acetate to a print that's partially completed and begin to draw and paint the colour in the places that I want. So far as I speak to you this print has taken some two months to get this far. This is one of the many light boxes around the studio and it, as it's the biggest one, it's the one that I need to work on this particular print. And what I do is check that all the marks that I've made are solid and will block out the light. This is a touche, which is a liquid which blocks out the light and uh, you'll see that I've got quite a range of different touches that will allow me to do different sorts of things. Here I'm just blocking in a few ab ab abrasions to the surface as this um, image has been moved around so it's got scratched a little bit. What's nice about this particular touche is that um, you can draw on it with China Graph which is a lovely gives you lovely soft edges especially if you're using a grained acetate sheet which I like very much. The marks do have to block out the light so although fi fibre tip pens are good 
rotaring pens are perfect. And here's, I just have to get that going. And we can work little marks, tiny little marks, dots, all sorts of breaking up the tone into small areas. In order to get the image from the acetate sheet onto the screen, I have to coat it with a light sensitive emulsion. And here we go. So this is a coating trough. This is a pre-mixed emulsion, which we're going to try not to drop on the floor. And the idea is to coat the screen as smoothly and thinly as possible. A couple of strokes. And a bit of the ever-present cardboard to get rid of the thick bits. And switch the red safe light on. Put the screen into a corner with a fan heater blowing on it and get rid of the, the lights and now that screen is going to dry in the dark and that will take about five or six minutes. The screen's dry, switch off the fan heater, put the positive on top of the light box for exposure switch that on so we can see where it's going to land and place the screen right over the top of that right in the middle and then a bit of high-tech board with towel wrap around it over the top to press it down and even more high-tech plastic tubs filled with gravel so that it's really pressing down against the surface of the glass. Now that takes quite a long exposure time. That's going to expose for 16 minutes. I'm going to switch the light box off, obviously. And the screen now goes through to the washout. The garden hose. Now we're just going to check and make sure that all the open areas really are open. A handy window. And and this is just making sure that all those areas that I've drawn are open and clear for the printing. When the printing is finished, the screen comes back to the washout booth. I put on a chemical that dissolves the green emulsion and it's sprayed out with a high pressure hose and is ready to print again. Here's the screen that's been exposed on the light box with the positive. It's been washed out and here we see the open areas which are going to print. But there are also various other holes around the edge of the screen. Now I've retouched the screen and put some paper strips around the edge so that the ink will only come through the areas that I want to print. I don't want any marks coming through on the margin of the paper. Now I'm going to put it into, onto the screen table 
which is a, a homemade one. In fact, I've been using this for about 40 years. It's just a box with a mere 3,500 hand drilled holes in it. Easy to do, easy to make. It just takes a long time to drill the holes. So, pro hinges to hold the screen in place so that it lands in the same place every time. And some high spec foam board with some tacky bits of masking tape hold the screen up from landing directly onto the table so that there is a little distance between the screen and the surface of the paper. That's called the snap distance. So that when I print it, when the squeegee goes over the surface of the screen, the only point it's in contact with the paper is when the squeegee is pulled across. Now we're going to put the ink on, which has been pre-mixed from a collection of different items. This is acrylic medium, which you might be able to see here. Three parts of that and a screen printing paste which stops the whole thing drying up. So if you printed that it would just be transparent. You add in a couple of drops of acrylic paint and it's very powerful. So sometimes I'm actually putting in a tiny drop, mixing it up and testing it out before I go any further. Here's my green that I've, I've mixed up before. And that's going to go on the near edge, the, the bit that I'm going to start printing from. The next bit is really very important and this is called registration and it's when I make this colour fit all the previous colours. There's an acetate sheet on the bed of the vacuum table. <laughs> This is my registration proof. I use the same print every time to locate the next colour. And that seems to work very well. I save every smidgen of ink and paper. It's all very expensive. Now the screen goes to the washout. I think of all the bits of technology that I use in screen printing, a high pressure hose is one of the most useful things that I have. John, tell me where this image came from originally. I used to take walks along the Northampton arm of the Grand Union Canal 
and I was very interested in the, uh, the shapes of the machinery, the bridges, the locks and uh, thought they might be a good subject for printmaking. So I collected the images. Give me an example of um, one of the techniques you've just explained with the touches, John, in this print. Well, the sky is a particular example because it required very close control over uh, uh, different sorts of textures. And I use the uh, lift first of all to define the edges of the cloud and then I sprayed into it with a spray diffuser and had to lay the sheet down flat so that the spray went over the top and landed down uh, from a vertical position otherwise all the little dots would join up and run down the surface of the plastic. And the other thing that I've used on this print is taking old paintbrushes chopping them right down so they become stumps and using those stiff stumps to work into the edges of the touche to produce soft and ragged edges.